This week is all about elephants and a waterfall, but mostly elephants. If you've never seen 200 elephants down a swimming pool before, keep watching. They don't just steal hats. We're the newbies. I'm Tara, and this is John. And not so long ago, we were married in Antarctica, promising ourselves that we would always prioritize experience over wealth. So here we are. We sold our house, left the city, and bought a van, which we've converted into our traveling home. Last week, we walked with Rhino. We went to the world's view and had a history lesson before feasting our eyes on millennia-old rock art. This week, as John already mentioned, we're heading to northern Zimbabwe, where there are elephants, and a lot of them. But first, we visit one of the world's greatest waterfalls, Victoria Falls. And John wants me to say, boom, boom, boom. If you are enjoying our videos, please do us a favor, whack that subscribe button just below and the little bell on the right hand side to turn on notifications so that you never miss an update. Road tripping again, my love. Road tripping again. This time we are in Tara's father's Land Cruiser. Yep, it looks very different, Cotty, in the background. Chugging our way through the Zimbabwean road system. Yeah, I don't know that Dad would be that happy about the use of the word chugging to describe his land cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, fair enough. But it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Yeah. Zimbabwe seems to have a road to everywhere. Mm -hmm. Just one, though. Just one. You yeah. don't have to turn. You don't have to think. Just drive. Get straight. on that road and go for five hours, and you'll get to the next place you're going. So heading to Vic Falls. For just one night, because we have both been there and That's have right. seen it, and we yeah. don't want to do any of the helicopters, microlights, whitewater rafting, which bungee jumping. bungee jumping. We all know what he's like with heights. So unlikely to get him leaping off a bridge. No, no chance. No chance. So just one night in Big Falls and then we are heading to... Mm, I don't know the names of the places. <laughs> There's no massive surprise there. But I am excited because I think we're going to go on a bit of safari. Cool drive. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I think I remember stopping in this very alley of trees when we came on a family trip around Zimbabwe when I was about six or seven. 80 kilometers. Nearly there. This has got to be one of the lumpiest, bumpiest roads we've been on in ages. Good one. Even worse than Italy. <laughs> So we are at Victoria Falls. Yay! This is Africa's largest waterfalls it's and the world, world's largest the waterfall. world's largest waterfall and one of the most impressive waterfalls in the world. Being the largest you'd think it would be. Absolutely. I came here in November 1999 for the first time and it was a, just a little bit of a dribble. I'm here a little bit later on in the year now, so hoping for a little bit more water coming over the edge. It is super hot today. But as we're getting closer, you can feel the spray from the waterfall. And that's pretty cool. Cools you down. Feels like it's cooling us down a little bit. Yeah. It's just around the corner. What have we here? It looks like Dr. Livingstone, I presume. Victoria Falls is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Livingstone was the first European to discover the falls in 1855. Although the falls were drawn on maps 140 years earlier by a Frenchman called De Fer. Of course, even prior to that, the falls had been well known by the local tribes who called them Musi Oyatunya, the smoke that thunders. I love that name. Its simplicity sums up the falls perfectly. The smoke that thunders is quite wonderful. Wow, that's cool, eh? Wow. Around the falls, there are little signs like this one here. They're not easy to spot, but they've got numbers on them. Number one, number two, number three, etc. And if you do them in order, you get to see everything. So this is number two, down 38 steps. really love about Big Falls are the fences next to the edge. I'm not a big fan of heights. Well, that ain't gonna do very much, is it? Look at that. See the rainbow 
it down there. Beautiful, eh? How much water is coming over the falls depends on the season. Generally speaking, like now, the falls are drier from July until January, and they're at their peak around Easter after the rainy season. So I've just braved coming and standing on the edge here. There isn't very much between me and a very long drop. But behind me, that way, that's the main part of the waterfall that we've just walked from. In front of me, just down there, there's a little bit more that goes around a horseshoe. That's the Zambian side of the river. We're of course on the Zimbabwean. And that way down there, that's where the river runs down towards the very, very iconic Vic Falls Bridge. We're heading there now. So on the other side of that bridge is Zambia. And usually underneath that bridge, if you're anyone other than a newbie, you might like to bungee jump. Oh no, no thanks. But I don't think they're doing it at the moment, which is a shame. I can't even see the cord dangling. I think it's safe to say that this is a very eerie time to be in Vic Falls. It's, all, it, it's like a ghost town because of COVID. Wonderful to have it to ourselves, but it's very strange to see it so quiet. Where are we going next? We are off to Wangi National Park. What's going to happen there? We're going to see some animals. Cool. <laughs> Well, we left Vic Falls this morning and we're off to a camp in Bangi National Park um, called Kulu Bush Camp and it is especially special for elephants. So elephants, it's all about the elephants isn't it? We're not expecting to see too much game because it's green season yeah. and there's bush everywhere yeah. and the game will be hidden away somewhere so exactly. we're not expecting too much game. Um, but I know, because I've seen pictures of this camp, that it's pretty awesome. There's um, something very special that happens here and we are super excited. I really hope it happens. I hope, I, I hope, hope, I hope. Right, we're on our way. Look at that. The little hamlets and villages along the side of the road. Really traditional buildings and structures. So we're heading to our 
room. Darling, they saw elephant and leopard last night. Tara's just jumped out of the bed. We were having a little bit of relaxing and she reckons there's an elephant outside. Isn't that cool? Excellent. <laughs> My soul feels fulfilled once more. There's an Apollo over there as well. Time to head out on our first game drive. What are we going to see? I have no idea. We've seen a massive herd of buffalo just around the corner. We're gonna try and get a bit closer because they're in the bush and it's quite thick at the moment. the largest herd of buffalo I've ever seen. Wangi National Park is the largest natural reserve in Zimbabwe, covering a huge area of almost 15,000 square kilometers. It is vast, with over 400 bird and 100 mammal species living within the park boundaries. We visited during the green season, when the bush is thick and wildlife viewing can be a little bit trickier. So we didn't expect to see much. Watering holes have filled and food is in abundance. We did, however, manage to spot some game on our drives into the park, which was very satisfying. Green seasons are often times to focus on the smaller things rather than the large carnivores. So this is the Wild Dog Foundation. Painted Dog Conservation Program. Center. So we're going to see some wild dog in here. Um, one of my favourite animals. Mine too. That um, that have been rescued because they've either hurt their leg or they've been in a snare or something bad's happened to them. And then they're, well, we'll find out a little bit more about it in a minute. But my understanding is that they're rehabilitated and let, let go back out into the wild. Come on, in. So we've just had a look in the museum. It was the story of a a wild dog, an individual wild dog, true story. I spot. I spot. Yeah. Did you know, did you read that a wild dog's coat is individual to them like our fingerprints? Or like zebra stripes. Yeah. So I spot had two little eye spots on his thumb. <laughs> I also learned that wild dogs can have between 10 and 14 puppies, but sometimes up to 20. 20 puppies. Well, that makes your effort, my darling, feel pretty rubbish. <laughs> <You're> so mean. <laughs> We've just been to see the dogs and hear a little bit more about the program and what they're up to here. Basically, what we have access to is two dogs who are injured beyond the point of being able to be returned to the wild. One has a broken leg and the other one was bitten by a lion on his, in her neck. Um, so wouldn't survive being in the wild. Um, they do have another pack here of five dogs, um, but I think it's mendable. You are not allowed to go and see those dogs because they're trying to keep them away from people so that they don't become habituated um, and then too relaxed in human company and then therefore vulnerable when they get re-released into the wild. So fascinating to hear what they're up to here and the project's evidently doing incredible work. It's so very difficult all over Africa to see a painted dog yeah. in the wild. Um, and so if you've never seen one before, I suppose, even though they are a couple of fences away from you and a couple of broken dogs, it's still nice to see them and, and still nice to support something like this. So Definitely. Worth a visit. Oh, 
This <laughs> swimming pool is where the elephants were drinking out of yesterday. We we're in the pool. The elephant, they've had to refill it because it was all dirty this morning, and like we showed. It. It was and clean it a bit gnarly. Um, but now it's nice and clean. And there are no elephants in sight. Yet. Mm. Apparently, though, if they come, you just sit quietly while they drink <laughs> in the pool. <laughs> that would be so cool. I don't think I'm brave enough. But let's see if it's going to get tested by bravery. <sighs> Day. This is a cracking way to end the day. A beer, a fire pit, and we're waiting for the elephants to come again. Sunset. Wangi is also famed for large herds of elephants, and one of these herds is over 500 strong, made up of 17 family groups who often visit the bush camp that we stayed in, drinking the swimming pool dry. This herd is known as the presidential herd because it was saved from a culling by the then president Robert Mugabe in the 1980s. The resident elephant population is large and spills over into neighboring conservancies and villages, which is why a cull was suggested. The park warden at the time requested Mugabe save these elephants, which was approved. And so the presidential elephants roam the lands today, drinking from swimming pools, as you would expect a presidential herd to do. Drank the swimming pool. And they made a mess of it while they did it. <laughs> That's so cool. One of our guides has just <laughs> woken us up to tell us that there's a lion somewhere in the area. That's the craziest thing that's happened. He's fast asleep and this voice is like, do you want to see lions? I'm like, what? Of course. <laughs> so we're going to go and see lions. <laughs> If you are enjoying our videos, please do us a favour, whack that subscribe button just below and the little bell on the right hand side to turn on notifications so that you never miss an update.